default social formation as human beings is that we're tribal. I have to say that from the beginning, right? Like, in fact, you could say that the most progress we've ever made as human beings is when we are in a competitive mode as rival groups competing. And it just kind of in some ways brings out the best in us. In other ways, it kind of doesn't, right? Uh, and how that applies to companies is that in the beginning, startups and organizations are pretty good about being tribal inwardly, meaning like, hey, let's fight the outside external forces and come together as a group. But as organizations grow, it's harder to maintain that sense of, uh, in tribe feeling, right? Especially now if you don't interact with different people in uh, different groups as much. Um, and the way to think about this is that as corporations grow, and you all know this, you've lived through this, there then becomes explicit kind of these functional and procedural borders and walls that are put up. And so all of a sudden, it's almost like there's a structural expectation to say that you have to be a bit removed or a bit impersonal from people in the other team. So I guess all of that to say there are systemic things at play that make departments or groups kind of compete and uh, uh, have conflict with each other. And so that's kind of when tribalism gets baked in, when you have these structures that builds these departments to kind of work against each other. And what happens is that a lot of times you don't see it until you implement a change, uh, change program or change initiative, right? That's when it finally rears its ugly dysfunctional head, right? And so McKinsey has a famous statistic around this, which is that, 70% uh, of large scale change programs fail. Like they don't reach their stated goals. And one of the biggest reasons is that departments and leaders in the organizations come with this kind of scarcity mindset, right? Where they have not only competing priorities, but they have very poor or non-existent collaboration between them. And that has a downward trickle effect. So for employees who are on the front lines, they're the ones who kind of ultimately experience this they experience this as negative or kind of unequal interactions um, between these two departments, right? So for example, the marketing team, uh, they'll view the IT department employees as the people who only know how to say no to opportunities. Like, I, I feel like that's just a common almost trope, but it's, it's true. It's based in reality of what people perceive each other. Uh, the flip side is IT views marketing folks as these distracted time and money wasters. Like there's these frivolous, rap scallions who come in with all these ideas and just like blow up the budget and the scope, right? And so, so these are kind of stereotypes that are built, um, but it's grounded in some level of reality, but it, it just keeps getting kind of amplified, especially uh, when you're trying to get them to work together on a large scale change uh, initiative. <laughs>